At the start of the film, we see Claude, a high school lad, watching a couple having intimacy in their bedroom. The worst thing is that the couple making love in front of the boy is none other than his friend's parents, who also considered him like their own son. Then we are taken into a flashback to a few days ago and see Germain, a late 40s man who is a French teacher at a high school. While he is busy checking student assignments, his wife, Jean, approaches him and also begins watching student assignments. She questions Germain about why he is giving students such low grades, to which he responds that all of the students have written nothing more than junk. After a while, he goes over one of his students' assignments, Claude Garcia's, and begins reading it for Jean. In his assignment, he stated that he teaches math to a student named Rafa Artol at his home. There, he noticed his mother, Esther Artol, a lovely middle-aged woman, and fell madly in love with her at first sight. He gave Rafa an arithmetic problem to solve before heading downstairs to spy on his mother. She was reading a magazine there, and he couldn't take his eyes off her. After snooping on Esther for a while, he goes to Rafa's room and tells him that his math is too weak and that he has to teach him regularly, which Rafa agrees to. After reading all of this, Jermaine tells his wife that his writing abilities are exceptional and that he has the potential to become a well-known author in the coming years. The following morning after class, Jermaine confronts Claude and admires his writing skills but warns the young man that he will be seriously troubled if Rafa learns what he thinks of his mother. Claude responds that he wrote it for him, not for Rafa and that he will not tell Rafa about his thoughts for his mother. He then hands him the next section of his assignment and exits the classroom. Germain brings Claude's assignment to his house and tells Jean everything he discussed with Claude. Then he begins reading his assignment. According to the assignment, this time when he went to Rafa's house, he noticed his mother was quite happy that Rafa was now getting better in math because of him. After admiring his teaching abilities, she resumed her house chores while Claude watched her with dirty eyes, having erotic thoughts about her in his mind. Jean finds it disturbing how a teenage boy could think such vulgar things about a woman who is his mother's age. Germain disagrees, claiming that all boys his age are naturally attracted to women. He adds that what makes Claude unique is his writing ability. The following day at school, Germain goes to the room where students' records are kept and asks about Claude's family to learn about his background. From there, he learns that Claude and his family moved to this city about two years ago and have changed many houses. He immediately understands that he must come from a low-income family with rental problems that cause them to move around a lot. Since he is already extremely impressed with Claude's writing, he decides to provide him with the proper guidance to become a professional writer. He gives him a few books that will help him hone his writing skills and exhorts him to keep writing. After that, Claude gives him the third section of his assignment to reassess. He had written in this section that this time when he went to Rafa's house, his father was also there. Rafa was sitting on the couch with his father, watching a game. After a while, his mother arrived and sat beside him. Rafa's father received a phone call and left to attend to it. Since Rafa was preoccupied with the game and his father had left for the phone call, Khalid began having fun peeking at her from such a close distance, and nobody was there to stop him. He went on to say that if his father and mother stayed apart like this, he could easily intimidate his mother. After reading this assignment, Jean, too, admires Claude's writing abilities. The following morning, Claude gives Germain the next section to read. Germain brings it home and sits down with his wife to read it. In it, he wrote that this time he gave Rafa a tricky mathematical equation and went downstairs to see what his mother was doing. There, he noticed his mother and father arguing about something. Claude began to hear them quietly from a distance. After a lengthy argument, his mother left for her room, but she noticed Claude standing nearby, peering in. She asked him why he was standing there, to which he replied that he was just examining the painting on the back wall. He added that Rafa's mother wasn't convinced by his reply and was sure he was spying on her. Furthermore, he overheard her in her room talking to her husband about changing Rafa's tutor. Claude now understands that if Rafa doesn't do well in math, his mother won't let him continue to teach him, which will ultimately mean he won't be able to see her. The following day, he asks Germain to steal the math exam so he can get Rafa ready for the coming questions. Additionally, he adds that he will stop writing if he doesn't steal the question paper for him. Germain is now concerned that if he does not assist him, he will abandon writing, and his dream of seeing Claude as a famous author because of him will be shattered, so he decides to assist him and steals the math paper. He gives Claude the exam question paper, and using it, he helps Rafa get ready for the test. As a result, Rafa achieves good grades in mathematics, securing Claude's position as a tutor at his home. His parents appreciate Claude because he has helped their son improve in math. Rafa's mother caresses Claude on the cheek, which he interprets as a positive sign in his mission of intimidating her. Rafa's father asks Claude if he can join them for basketball tomorrow, but he declines, saying he has something else to do. The following morning, when Claude learns that Rafa and his father left for basketball, he knocks on his door. 
His mother opens the door and asks him why he is here, to which he responds that he forgot his book there. His mother invites him in and starts looking for his book, while he stands close to her and continues to stare at her with arousing thoughts. After some searching, she informs him that his book is not present. Actually, he hadn't left any books there, he had simply come to quench his thirst for watching Rafa's mother daily. Then, after noticing her earrings, he informs her that his mother had the same earring too, but she had died months ago. He adds that he always misses her, to which she consoles him and tells him that he can consider her his mother. She then serves him a drink, and they both start talking more. Claude had written all of this in his assignment, which he handed to Germain. After reading this, Jean tells Germain that if Rafa's father discovers what Claude is up to and his sentiments towards his wife, he will kill him, to which Germain responds that this will never happen. Following this, Germain and Jean go to watch a movie in a theater. At night they resume reading the next part of Claude's assignment, in which he writes that he had gotten late teaching Rafa and it was already evening, so his father told him to stay in their house at night. Rafa took him to the guest room, where he could spend the night. There, Rafa kissed Claude unexpectedly, revealing his secret love for him. At midnight, he left the guest room and quietly entered Rafa's mother's room, where he began watching her sleep and fantasizing about having an intimate encounter with her. After reading this, Jean seriously thinks that Claude is behaving older than his age, but Germaine reassures her that it is normal for teenage boys to obsess over these things. As the days pass, Claude gets a little bit closer to Rafa's mother. One day, he notices Rafa's mother and father arguing about something, and his father eventually leaves. He seizes the opportunity and hands a letter to Rafa's mother. The next day, she reads the letter with Claude standing in front of her, and in it, he expresses his undying love for her. Claude begins to imagine Germain being present and encouraging him to talk. Rafa's mother is deeply impressed by Claude's declaration of love for her and begins smooching him in the kitchen. They continue their wild kissing on a couch but are interrupted by Rafa. He feels bad for him and rushes to his room, where he commits suicide. The assignment ends with the phrase, to be continued. Actually, it is a section of Claude's assignment that he handed over to Germain yesterday to read. Germain is shocked to learn that Rafa is no longer alive, and he does not inform Jean because she is already against him for stimulating Claude. The following morning, Germain learns that Rafa is absent from class. He rushes to reception. There, he requests that the receptionist call Rafa's home to inquire about his absence. He is relieved to learn that he is suffering from a fever, which is why he has not come to school. After class, Germain questions Claude about why he wrote that Rafa had died when he is still alive. He responds that he had only done so to make the story more compelling. Fearful that Rafa will commit suicide after facing reality, Germain tells him to quit what he's doing. Claude responds that he cannot quit writing and will continue. Germain replies that he can continue if he wants to, but he adds that he won't help him in any way and won't read his assignments either. Enraged, Claude exits the classroom and tosses his written assignment into the trash bin. Germain can't help but pull the assignment out of the trash bin and start reading it. He mentioned in it that Rafa's father returns home frustrated with his job. He is sitting on a couch, annoyed by his employment, but when his wife comes over and tells him that she is pregnant, he becomes happy. After a while, Rafa showed up and told his parents that Claude would no longer be visiting their home and that they would need to find a new tutor for him. After reading this, Germain goes downstairs to leave for home. He comes across an injured Claude sitting on the floor. Germain tells him that he should no longer visit Rafa's family, to which he agrees and says that he will no longer write about them either. He continues by saying that he and Rafa had a fight a few minutes ago and that Rafa had beaten him severely because he had found out everything going on between him and his mother. However, he informs him that, to complete his story, he met Rafa's mother in the park. There, she returned his love letter to him. He tried to persuade her that they could leave this city and live happily elsewhere, but she declined, claiming that he is too young and of her son's age, and they cannot have any relationship. She told him to forget everything that had happened between them. Following that, a broken-hearted Claude knocks on Germain's door. Jean opens the door and informs him that Germain is not at home right now, to which he responds that he is aware that Germain is not at home, which is why he is here. The scene then shifts to Germain, who has been fired from the school after the headmaster learns that he was the one who stole the math paper. Heartbroken, he returns home, where Jean gives the next part of Claude's assignment, revealing to Germain that Claude had visited his home during his absence. He starts reading the assignment. In it, Claude wrote that he went to Germain's house and revealed to Jean that Germain once told him that his wife is infertile, which is why they don't have children. Following this, Jean became agitated and began intimating Claude at Germain's house in his absence. After reading this, Germain loses his cool and starts beating Jean. 
The movie ends with Germaine and Claude conversing with one another in a park, with Germaine telling Claude that he can't believe he's still talking to the person who ruined his career and personal life, whereas Claude starts to laugh in reply. I hope you enjoyed the recap. If so, then give this video a thumbs up. And yes, if you want to be the first to know about my new videos, hit the subscribe button right now. It may seem worthless to you, but it is a huge motivator for me to keep going. I'll see you in my next video. Have fun and keep watching the movie explainer.